going back to last year for UConn, uh, it was the the whole theme of the year was replacing the production from Kemba Walker. And last year, how did you deal with him not being there? What were some of the things that had to happen to transition to with life without him? Um, just the whole leadership role. Um, Kemba was was a heck of a leader. Um, I wasn't there when he was there, but uh, you could just tell on the floor. And then when I came up with my business and stuff like that, that he was he was the leader of the team. Um, counted on him, you know what I'm saying, they fed off of him, so with him not being there, we lacked leadership um, last year, and I think that's the big reason, or well, one of the reasons that we had a, a down year last year. You've had to deal with, uh, in your short college career, the NCAA and their technicality in terms of rules quite a bit. Uh, last year, you couldn't really get the start to the season that you wanted because of everything that was going on in terms of eligibility. So how did you adjust to life not knowing when you would exactly play and when you wouldn't? Um, it was tough. Um, it was extremely hard, uh, just mentally. Um, you know what I'm saying? Just knowing that you worked so hard to get to where you was at and just to have it stripped from you like that. Um, so it was hard just having a good attitude every day, wanting to practice and wanting to come in and, and go hard, knowing that you couldn't play um, when the rest of the team was suiting up. So um, it was hard, but I had my family there to, to support me. Um, uh, Coach Ali really, really helped me last year, too, talking to me and getting me through the days when I, when I, wasn't, when I was having a bad day. So how, when all that situation was kind of taken care of and you were unleashed a bit, how did that feel? Oh, it felt great. Um, felt like everything I had worked for was paying off. I got to suit up with the team and, and, and go to war with, with the team. And um, I got to do what I love to do, which is play basketball. So it was, it's always good when I, can, when I got the opportunity to play ball. And now the uh, NCAA with the new rules in terms of postseason eligibility for uh, the academic performances made UConn not eligible for the NCAA tournament. And what was the reaction when you found that out? I mean, I was, <clears throat> I was shocked. Uh, once again, um, you know, I was disappointed um, just because we, we, we don't get the chance to, to win a national title or, or compete for a national title. But, um, I mean, it is what it is. I don't have no say-so over that. So um, I just got to prepare myself to have a good season and prepare my team to have a successful season. So how do you get yourself motivated knowing that you can't win a national championship? What gets you guys going? Proving the world wrong. Um, with everybody leaving and the situation that we're in, um, nobody expects anything from us. They expect us to have a, a bad year. Um, I feel like we got enough in our locker room and um, a, a, a good enough team to have a successful team and, and really open a lot of eyes and upset a lot of uh, ranked teams. So then the transition now from Jim Calhoun, who was such a legend there at UConn. First, let's talk about him and what he meant to you and what in your time there have you learned that he meant to the school of UConn? Um, my time there, I, I, I've, I now understand that what he meant to UConn. He's, um, he's a legend in stores. Um, you know what I'm saying? And when he left, everybody was heartbroken. Um, a lot of the, the campus was down and stuff like that. But um, it picked back up when we found out that Coach Ali was going to be the head coach because everybody loves him. Everybody knows him. Um, we didn't, they didn't want no, no random person coming in there changing things around because it's um, KO coming up under Calhoun. A lot of things are the same. But, um, I mean, with, with Coach being gone, we miss him. Um, we miss him a lot, but we support his decision and we're happy for him. So, Kevin Ali, as a head coach, what are some of the things that now it's different for him that he's taken over that lead role? And going back to motivating, how is he motivating the team with its current situation? Um, he's, he's a positive person, period. Um, you'll never see KO talking negative about anything. Um, he, he, he has a, a gift in turning a positive, I mean, a negative into a positive, and he brings that positive energy every day. He encourages every day to work hard and to get better and to prove the world wrong. Like I said, um, he, he really um, installed that we have enough in our locker room to, to prove a lot of people wrong. Now one of UConn's main rivals is Syracuse, and you were able to play against them last year. What do you remember the most about that UConn-Syracuse rivalry? Um, that... We played them three times, and every time the game was close. Um, I think the the first time was the one we lost um, lost the most at Syracuse. But I mean that that game is just it's ridiculous, um, especially leading up into it. All the talk about it, all the hype, um, the way the the schools rally around each other, and and that whole week before the before the game is is, is awesome. I mean that's really one of the best rivalries in college basketball, and with Syracuse heading to the ACC, that rivalry. In terms of it being a Big East rivalry, could come to an end. Uh, how upset would you be if like you couldn't play Syracuse anymore? 
I would, I, I would be upset um, just for the simple fact that it, it's a rivalry and um, it was there before I was there. Um, and it's fun playing in the game, but I mean, they they made their decision to do what they had to do. That's not going to stop UConn from from pro, um, producing and, and, and having good teams. So um, I mean, we just gonna have to get a new rival.